Tell you what, the betrayal of Bologna so far has been up there with the most annoying parts of this series. They were such a good ally and they really do cut off my territories. Every every turn they exist is a, I would like to politely say, is an affront. A affront to the Roman Empire. I don't know how long we can let this stand. Exploration. It means I can produce boat units a lot quicker now. Conscription is useful, serfdom's fine, natural philosophy is all good. I don't mind any of that stuff, but it's whether I want to put press gangs in at the moment. I don't think it's worth it but it's good to have that card. Next up, guilds, the unusual bottleneck that you can never get through. You have to get guilds before you can get to any of the other future game civics. Why? I have no idea it's the way it's been set up but every time I see that I always think it's a little bit strange. There's, oh we've almost destroyed all this cavalry. This was a huge spawn. Oh look, huzzas! You know Hungary is actually at war with Poland. Venice could get taken by Hungary. Oh my goodness, are we gonna see a revived Austro-Hungarian Empire taking over Venice? This could be way too real. Can't let that happen. Surely we can't let that happen. Oh, Caesar Augusta. Loyalty now being lost. All right, this city needs to grow and it needs to grow fast. Valletta has sent a single caravel out, completely exposed here. This is our opportunity just to try and kill the city-state's army a little bit. Yeah, perfect. This is how we're going to creep in on their sphere of influence. A third source of the... Oh, I know what I was going to do. Take out conscription and put in raid. 46 gold per turn. That is a big amount of gold per turn, but I've just already gained myself another 120 something just on this one pillage alone and a bunch of culture as well. So really, that was well worth it. Pillage economy is absolutely going to try and keep us up with this game. I'm going to find it hard to keep up otherwise. However, look at this. The frigates have now knocked the wall down in that city. I need to take Knossos fairly quickly because then I can land my trebuchets and get towards Sparta, which 73 defense. That is tough. That is going to be a very tough nut to crack. I think we can do it, especially with a four population Athens sat right there. Yes, that is absolutely the sort of thing that's going to help a lot. Oh, the Falcon. You've arrived and of course you can ascend up a cliff, can't you? Yes, of course you can. Right, you do some pillaging for me. What a, what a play. Should have known. Should have known we'd be saved by the Falcon. Do I want to wait? This is the thing. I kind of almost made this attack a little bit early. Privateers would have been really handy just to nab all of these lumber yards but it's not worth you know pulling a knight onto that territory and waiting i'd rather keep momentum loyalty is going to be incredibly difficult to hold in that city i don't think armani is currently doing me much is she mm, no she's not so i'm going to actually bring her away move you here just for now but this line inventory will attack and then nossos will take one attack with a caravel and then two which means i now claim this city now this will be even worse minus 14 well militos is oh, that's even more loyal than it once was okay Okay, shunt you up a tile there. Minus six and minus five. That's not bad. And look at this. Already my trebuchet can land. We can actually land our siege equipment, tack through to Athens. This is why having a huge navy was so important. But as you can see, we took two cities and gained 300 gold each. I could have waited and uh, finished metal casting before taking these two cities. Um, I should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I don't have a reason. That absolutely was a misplay. I've missed out on about 400 gold there, but it's fine. We don't need it. The extra gold is very handy for us. Might look to upgrade my bombards as soon as I can. Metal casting. Okay, that's exciting, but look at this. Here's the Greek and Valetan fleets. They decided instead of doing anything useful, they were going to attack this area rather than defending their inland. Why would you ever do that? There is no reason why you would ever look to do that, I am sure, but can we get a couple of kills in here. You know, I think we might be able to get the absolutely hilarious outnumbered era score, right? Yep, there we go. My superior caravel. It was so outnumbered. Yeah, all of the whole Greek navy is here. Why were you down here? Don't ask. Don't ask questions. Sometimes you just have to accept that the AI plays like the AI, and that's okay. I only have one turn left on the double building world congress, and I went from 100 military strength to about 1,900. You know what? I feel like as a player, we absolutely gain the maximum out of that and I'm pretty proud of myself. That's that's pretty good. I'm going to celebrate with all of this pilfered gold with a bit of infrastructure in my lands. Let's build one university there and a second university here up to 156. Oh my lord Germany is up to 594 science. We have got to really keep relevant here. I'm 15 techs behind. Pillaging is going to be so important. All right let's keep my army relevant. Quick field cannon Kirasa as I build up the rest of my industry in the meantime meantime with a quick harbour. We like extra trade routes. Gold is going to be crucial this game. I think 
I've got to invest in multiple governors here. Victor's doing a really good job, but the more governors I get in, the more I'll be able to try and just keep a lot of cities loyal at the same time. They go 0.2, minus 2. We've actually got a pretty stable occupation of Greece here, you know. Move this trebuchet. Oh, I could upgrade to Bombard, which would be useful, but I think we'd actually lose the great general. But I mean, this unit's going to get killed by Sparta, isn't it? Yeah. So I'll upgrade this one instead, but we'll move to Sparta. Let's just make one attack, shall we? See see how much of the, the city walls we can damage whilst the Falcon delightfully steals me some culture at the same time. Very fast paced navy though. This is where Hicksunk Draconis is so useful. Argos also doesn't have walls. They didn't expect me. They didn't expect me to break through these western cities. They thought they were safe, but no, we've punched right through and we're now skirting all the way round Sparta and taking all of their islands. There's nothing they can do. Oh, this is the sort of war that just, it feels like it has so much flavor, you know? There's a backstory here. It really helps that the Barbary Corsas are out there just being a nightmare, be being absolutely awful, like on my side though. I love it. Pergamon, four population over there. Send up this caravel, see if we can go and explore. There's another set. Mycenae, one population. I guess there's a one city with walls. But there's a lot here, a lot here for me to take over. In fact, can I take over Athens just like that? You better believe I can. 500 gold that time. And oh, its loyalty is almost there. Savia, 240 science per term. There's a lot of very, very high science sieves over here. World Congress time. I'd love it if trade routes got sent to me. Luxury policy. Let's see which is at the bottom of the tree. Amber. Everyone. Everyone loses out if Amber gets banned. So let's vote for Amber. Yes, we'll bring the world down with me. No to pearls. Do I have pearls? I do. Oh, boring. Serfdom. Out. Republican legacy. In. There we go. My cities are now starting to get a lot happier, but I need to now work on getting baths up everywhere. The warlord's throne is finished. That means we've got 20% production in every Every single one of my cities now. This is where Julius Caesar gets serious. Every time we take a city, we get 500 gold and 20% production in all cities for five turns. Rome is a juggernaut founded on the conquests of its foes, and that's exactly what we need to continue doing. Otherwise, we'll just run out of momentum. Because right now, 34 techs. Scotland is on 45. For uh, Germany, 45. Spain, 48. Can't afford to let this happen. We need to keep pushing. Well, Bologna, if you're going to fight me, then. I get to keep your gold. That's the rule, right? Oh almost 800 gold. I don't know whether to destroy Bologna. The, oh, the, the world would hate me. I could raise it. I could raise it and then found cities where it was, but based on its location, it would have to be pretty much exactly there. Hmm. I mean, it is a really good city. It is a really good city. Uh, maybe I'd do the same for Venice. Is it really a unified Rome without these territories? I don't know. One good thing though, I've managed to reduce Sparta's defenses by about six by pillaging all of the districts around it. So this city's getting getting easier and easier for me to kill now. There is the city of Argos. Well, it would be if I actually managed to get the killing blow on it, which there you go. I do. Oh, I tell you what Germany's done. I was just having a look at their land. They've already got research labs up and stock exchanges. <laughs> <laughs> and planes. <laughs> it's turn 144. It's only 660 AD. It's like I'm playing against another player. Oh, well, here you go. Here's the Greek Navy. They finally turned up. It was about, ooh, I'd say, seven turns too late, but they did turn up. Well, I guess we say better late than never, but I'm not entirely sure that's true. I might just have to divert my Navy temporarily while this lot all heals. Zaf, I know. I know. Just everyone take a turn to heal whilst I go and deal with this threat from the other direction. I want to make sure that this attack continues in the reign that I have the undisputed most powerful navy of the region. That's why I've been doing so well. If that comes under threat, then the whole thing just becomes a little bit more awkward. Humanism. I'm not upgrading cards anymore, am I? So let's change this over a little bit. Bissalbanken. I'm about to start trading a lot with the Ottomans. Warlord's Throne. Okay, let's fix that university up. And I think have I got a university in every single one of my campuses that I've built? No, not quite. Caesar Augusta just needs one. Bam, now I do. Oh, I feel like I should have more science than this. <laughs> 
<laughs> I really do. Oh, here we go. Look at these trade routes to the Ottomans. Yes. Now I'm making a bit of a trading hub from Setia. This is my very northern city, but with a bath, I'm going to put an encampment here. I'm going to put an industrial zone here, and this will be the source of railroads and settlers for the rest of my empire. There's so much land that I could go and claim with a lot of wonders on it. That's really what I want to do at the moment. I need an industry. I need an industry to help me pull that off. Well, that'll be fun for later. Macedon has already got steel. They've already got steel. That means they have artillery and at the very minimum field cannon, probably army walls, or at least a uh, field cannon cores. That's going to be nasty. Now they've got some stuff on the coast that I can see. Oh, Germany's denounced me. That's not good. They're a good trading partner. Very good trading partner. That's a double pillage industrial zone. In fact, they've got quite a few on the coast. Oh, look, they've got even more navy. Where's all this navy come from? That's amazing. And uh, a spy has just taken out Pingala from my lands. That's frustrating. It's most of my culture. <laughs> That's a very sizable chunk of my culture. What am I going to do? I really don't have enough faith, but the thing about Grandmaster's Chapel is that you pillage faith. If you start pillaging faith, then you can spawn troops on the front lines. It's really handy. Now, I know intelligence agencies, obviously that's useful. You get a spy and you start using it offensively, but I'm building a spy. Spies aren't, you only get one extra and they do a little bit better. No, I'd rather have a Grandmaster's Chapel. Oh, I was going to keep that city, but fine. Ottomans just raised it. <laughs> okay. I guess that's a case of if we don't get to keep it, then no one does. I cannot let my alliances expire, by the way. This is really important, but I keep on top of these. I'm only going to have a few friends in this game for basically the whole of it because of the uh, grievances I'm going to generate. So if people want to be my ally, that's it. They must be my ally forever. Otherwise, I'm going to get very sad. Now, instead of killing one population cities, Ottomans, I need you to take Athens. Please, you have very strong units around it. You can take Athens. You just have to put some concerted effort in. There we go. Actually, even better, we might be able to go and steal it ourselves if we're really quick. I'll join an aid request. Military emergency. Hmm, this could be trouble. Let's see how many people join in on this one. Oh, a few people. A few people have joined in and it's not good. Macedon, Spain, and then Greece. Spain is a tough one because I think Spain, I, I honestly think they have battleships. Being honest with you, Macedon, I was gonna really target with my next attack. So that in itself is not a problem. I just wish we could have declared war on our own terms, put it that way. Although, still pillaging. Huge amounts of gold. Sparta is surrounded. I'm now starting to hit its walls down a little bit, which is useful. We even got frigates in attacking it. The Greek navy appears to be pretty much broken now, which is useful. Oh, phew. Okay, the military alliance with the Ottomans was about to wear off. They like me plus 45, though. That's not as bad. Oh, I think there was a big collapse in scientist points there. And somehow, I've accidentally picked up Mendelev, even though I have no right to. I bet a bunch just went in one turn. Yep, three in one turn. That's weird. Germany is just mucking things around with the obscene amount of points they're getting per turn at the moment in everything. Oh, look, there you go. Ottomans have actually seen Pergamon and Athens. So they've genuinely picked up half the cities in this war. It's not just us. I love it. I love it. This war has seen genuine cooperation. And Sparta's it. Sparta is the remaining last city here. We will siege. We will attack where we can. I think we can take Sparta out when I mean, we're doing some serious damage, which is all good. And with that, we need to start thinking about another target. And suddenly Egypt is looking rather inviting. Only ancient walls on the coast, nine population city full of luxuries. Are they trading with me? They are trading with me for luxuries that I would then grab from them. A room in Egypt. I mean, seems about right to be fair. Do I take over the letter or am I going to just... No, I'll claim it back. I will claim it back once Gorgo is out of the game. I'll just keep pillaging it for now but yeah, that's good. No, I'm actually going to bring the rest of my navy out. We're going to search for any Greek navy that's remaining, but Gre I honestly think Egypt is the way to go. I'm going to have zero luck against Spain, and not at the moment, not with steel walls and battleships. Hungary is an ally. Macedon, 88 strength, steel walls. Whoa, also tough. Also very, very tough. Well, mercantilism now means that I have privateers. That makes the raiding a lot more favorable for me. Hey, quick question. Why does Basil have your like what why 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 <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Is that one of those questions we don't really want to know the answer to? I, I think it might be, you know? Well, that was well-timed. Ballistics just finished, and a meteor shower literally appeared right next to a warrior. Huzzah! That's a Kurosar. Let's 
go find some barbs. They've been pillaging Carthage, and I don't like that. Not at all. Right, ballistics is really, really handy. I need to industrialize rapidly now. Get the production I need to really try and spam my way into the future. Setia will become a really important little settler hub for me. I'll have control over the letter very soon. Granada? Hmm, if I can make peace with Spain, maybe. Maybe I can get Granada on side as well. Might prove tricky though. Might prove very, very tricky. Oh, I tell you what, that plus four science. I really want it back from Bologna. I think we've got to kill the city-state, haven't we? It's got to happen. Has to happen. Please. Please, can I kill Sparta this turn? Please. I need to take uh, Greece out of the game. Yeah, it's going to let me. Well, there you go. With help from the Ottoman Empire, we divided Greece and Greece becomes Rome's first acquisition. Quite apt to that. And I'm hoping, actually, oh yeah, the loyalty in this area is a lot better now. So much better. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, we'll sort out the specifics of this city once it's all been fixed. There's a lot of repairing to do, but the rest of the army, make your way out. We have some Egyptians to kill. I reckon we can probably get the Ottomans in on this one, to be honest. So Bologna being back on side, that has made a huge, huge boost on my science. And Tatusa as well. In fact, let's very briefly unlock Charismatic Leader, because I can put two envoys into Hattusa and gain another load of university yield. We'll get more campuses soon. More campuses soon. But Romeo have stepped to 200 science per turn now. Oh, Egypt is denouncing me. All right, that's a step you may regret. Oh, check out this trade route. It goes all the way from Setia through Ostia, through Rome, all the way out of the other side of Italy, then through my cities in this direction, and eventually kicks out and heads over to Gilgabro. I like that route. That is that is a fun route. The more routes I can get with Gilgabro, the better, because I believe you're my research ally. Yes, you are. Oh, that's wonderful. If Macedon, if you're going to build like a random port just in the Med that's totally undefended, I will steal from it, and I will be very, very happy about that. Plus, my Grandmaster's Chapel is now giving me 30 faith with every pillage. That's handy. The Ottomans do want a joint war with Egypt now. Well, you're still my military ally, so I will absolutely love it. Oh, and even better, Gilgabro is in as well, which means I've got another plus five combat strength. The double bonus. So you don't see it against the cities. It's just the units you really see it. But the Falcon, the Falcon will make you pay. Oh yeah, we're still here. We still exist. Oh yeah, look at this. So my frigate's got plus 15 combat strength. Five from the military alliance, five from Gilgabro, and then five from the Admiral. Oh, -ho. that's a nice set of combos. That's a very nice set indeed. Setia has a military academy. That's three era score. And this city's becoming a bit of a powerhouse now. And don't forget, any barb camp I kill, still worth 500 gold. That's a lot. All of this pillaged gold, all of this raided gold, it's just going straight back into my capital. As soon as I get power plants, that's going to be really, really good. <sighs> Ramsey's just stole the letter. Why would you do that? I mean, I had such a weak grip on it. It was ridiculous. But but why would you do that? Oh, well, I'll take out my frustration on Swenet. Apologies. Well, not really. I'm very happy about what I'm doing here. Just focusing on as much pillage as we can. Here are all the troops. Looks like Egypt mostly has mounted troops. A lot of cavalry. Maybe some anti-cav will be a really good idea for me. Another barb camp. Quite a few of these I'm managing to clear, actually. It's it's pretty handy. And a spy. Do I want to counter spy or do I want to aggressively spy? Hmm. I haven't seen an Egyptian city that is worth going for, but I bet, you know what I bet? I bet there's a commercial hub in this game that's worth it. 160, 1,000 gold in Berlin, 700, 1,200. That's quite a bit of gold. That's quite a bit of gold. Do I do that? Let's let's use my spies. We'll try and steal some gold. Oh, Preslav is another city-state and one that isn't trying to kill me. That That is a novelty. Ah, uh, let's take it. So just in terms of random little purchases, I up, this is my original exploring warrior that got held up in all of these barb camps. I brought them back to Hungary, upgraded them to line inventory, and now I'm going to attack Macedon from the other direction. I say attack. I'm going to go pillage all the lumber mills. Cost me 600 gold, but I've got to get at least two pillages to make it worth it, I think. I'm sure we can do it. Sure we can. Egyptian walls are doing 17 damage to my boats here. That's not too bad. Oh, but Curacao core. That's not too good. I've, I've got knights running around. They will be killed very quickly. Africa is just full of barbarians. There are probably about two to three line inventory, some muskets, some skirmishes. All I want to do is get the gold from killing the tribal village, or the barb camp, but no, doesn't look like that's a very sensible idea at all. I think this should push me though. Close, close to 200 science. Yeah, this is good. The chancery as well helps. I don't have any 
six envoy scientific city states, but I'll get there. I will get there. And actually, I do own kill one now. I, I've just realized that. Yeah, here it is. So if I can pick up two suzerains, which is looking really tricky considering there's 10, 12, 16, 15 envoys on them, and there's a science bonus in it. But yeah, that may not be may not be very realistic. It's just the nature of a huge game, you know? Sometimes these things happen. Whether by design or accident, <laughs> the AI Germany has really developed quite a really good set of districts. Look at this, commercial hub surrounded by a bunch of Hansas. Oh, that's actually quite, it's quite exciting. Germany is spreading their religion to me. What does their religion do? Oh, it's warrior monks and crusade. Of course it is. Lovely. <laughs> Oh, that's wonderful. So pleased to see Crusade being spread to my lands. Uh-huh. My second North African city, however, is Silk. Silk. More furs. There's really, really good luxuries down here. The walls of Swinet fall. Now we move on. I have a lot of frigates. Not to not to boast, but I have a lot of frigates and now we're attacking this city. <laughs> we don't land in Egypt often, but when we do, we do it well. Especially with all of this pillaging as well. Colonialism. Some good cards here. Uh, charismatic leader, I don't need that anymore. I'm going to put retainers in for a little bit. I have a huge amount of troops just scattered around my land still from when I built them all. I, I never quite got around to moving every single one <laughs> to, to the front line because there were just so many. So this is quite good. I can actually generate quite a few immunities just by sitting them in my cities. The further we go into Africa, the worse these barbs seem to be getting. So I'm just going just gonna to walk away. Oh, that's a Macedonian tank. Oh, lots of Macedonian tanks tanks. Oh, wonderful. Well, they're already up at combustion. That's what you like to see, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and my wooden boats are feeling really, really hardcore now. Like, this line inventory isn't going to be able to actually pillage anything without dying. So I'm going to have to retreat. That that was a failed experiment. <laughs> that was a very failed experiment. Six turns until the next era. I need 14 era score. We're doing our best. We are genuinely doing our best here. But uh, finding era score is proving tricky. There are two people left on the map. Is there, there's no chance I can find them. That's the problem. Saivian is one of them. Gilgamesh, two. So yeah, I think Georgia is one of them. Maybe Babylon or Persia or someone like that. But I just can't quite get a unit over here to go and find them. My alliance with the Ottomans is way off. So they're not going to share me who it is. I'll power my cities in a sec if I can build up like 2,000 gold in order to get the coal power plant running. It, assuming I have coal. That is also a big caveat to that one. Oh, there's one era uh, Apparently that was flooded land or stormed land or something along those lines. So that's okay. Oh, I I could settle next to Vesuvius. That's not a bad idea. That's some era score. We're gonna need a lot of gold. I think gold is fundamental, as is always the case, to all of the era score that we can pick up here. So we'll we'll take a look. They're gonna be Swenet taken. Oh nope, close, very close. We're we're pushing in. Oh, as I lose a unit to barbarians, which are incredibly tough. That's something I didn't notice. It's turn 157, and Frederick is already in space, and in fact is going to the moon. That's that's um. That's very interesting. It's 940 AD. Ah, lovely. Okay, luckily we do have at least a couple sources of coal. This one is on fire and that one is under Kilwa. I didn't have any coal. I don't know if there is any coal in Italy, but it doesn't matter. We conquered some. So we win even though we shouldn't have won. Well, now that we've industrialized, does it make sense to do anything else than to go for flight? I'm not convinced it does, you know. Oh, I love the pathing in this game sometimes. Go round. This, this, no, not on the land. <laughs> It actually is quicker to not move and try and go over the land. At least we can say that Swenet falls. The first city in Egypt has been taken and it's loyal. And ladies and gentlemen, it is loyal. Still going to move Victor in anyway, but I like that. I like that a lot. I think I've just realized that with that city capture, I think for the first time I've now pushed just over the amount I would need for a sprawling empire. So right now, Ottomans are 16, Germany 17 so Cities. Unless somebody I haven't met has more, which is unlikely. If I settle on top of this horse, I'll get the points for Vesuvius and I'll get the points for Sprawling Empire. It's a double. I don't think I've got time to bring it down from Setia. We've only got five turns, but I'm going to do it. We're, we're going to do it. It's 1,700 gold. It's very expensive, but we just seized 500 gold. And if we keep conquering, well, ladies and gentlemen, if we keep conquering, we're not going to have any problems at all, are we? The walls of Shedet are down. Well, sounds quite rude, doesn't it? Ah, Shedet. 
the city at the back. 85 strength suddenly and renaissance walls. Oh, I'm going to need a proper siege force here, aren't we? I'm just unlocking water parks for a bit of happiness, but then we'll go for nationalism. That will help. And now that I've got a bit of a safe haven, I'm just going to pull my troops back for a second and we're going to just heal. I don't think there's any shame in that. <laughs> I don't think there's any shame in that at all. Well, my spy is unlikely to make a 50% chance because as we all know by now, oh my god, look at all this anti-air tank core. Oh, don't think about it, I said, don't think about it. As we know, spies will always be negative if they have a chance with me. My spy luck is zero. I'm gonna gain sources without barbecue, without sweet chili, oh my goodness, without Szechuan pepper. We will not steal that gold, so we have to do everything we can to win. Oh, this is brutal. I've just realized, swin it, the city I've just taken had five great works in it. Five of them. Oh my lord, I'm so sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I should make that I should make that abundantly clear. I am not sorry, but wow, that's more than I thought. Pillage economy is the most likely thing to get me this golden age. I've only got four turns, but I want to really establish this beachhead. So I am going to take the city before I have time to pillage everything. And the reason for that is because I've got silk and now salt being brought into the empire. That's awesome. Silk was new. That genuinely makes me a little bit happier, which is good. And salt I can immediately sell with the 500 gold and sour like yeah look at that i've got a lot more you know even with my trebuchets i'm not actually far away from observation balloons so yeah just holding this beachhead and then going for egypt after it's not a bad idea you know in the meantime any troop that dares to pull itself anywhere near the coast is just going to get blasted by all my frigates how is germany already on to shah that's a modern era engineer 228 engineering points <laughs> <laughs> you have to laugh because it's depressing. Go Kurosawa, go wandering into the desert. Oh, run away, <laughs> but that's 500 gold. This is beautiful gold, beautiful gold. I need it. I need it so much. Actually, look, there's fur. It's all fixed from my previous war. And there you go. Look, more gold up front. That means I now have the gold capacity to pop down a factory and then a coal power plant immediately after. That gives me the refining boost. I am after after all, a refined gentleman. That will switch on the power in that city because I've got coal. Oh, I don't feel like I'm gonna have enough era score here, but we have to give it a go, don't we? Here is another settler. It is a sprawling city, three era score. It is also next to Vesuvius, another three era score. So that means we need seven in three turns. I'm only gonna get two from generating power. That's not as much as I would like. Okay. Oh, I've never used horses in a unit. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Oh, I can make an armada out of a military unit. I can make an armada. Okay. Well, I think I need to do that then, don't I? I mean, it is annoying that I'm going to lose the bonus on all of my boats, but they'll get upgraded at some point anyway. Yeah, sod it. All right, that's my first armada. That's one hero score. Is that it? Oh, dear. And here is a cavalry, which is my first horse unit. That's one more. I'm going to get two from power. That takes me to three left in three turns, and I am... I am out of ideas. Like, the problem is the only city state I can grab control of doesn't have an army, so I can't levy it. That's my usual thing. And I don't think I've actually unlocked any causes for war, unless there's a liberation war hiding somewhere out here, which to be honest, I'll have a look around, but I don't think there's a liberation war anywhere. Oh my Lord, he appears like a savior. Arabia has just found me. I would love to sample. No, they're sampling my city. Fine, whatever. Oh. I think there's only one other person now to find. I wish, I wish somehow <laughs> I could I could find the last person. I just don't have any troops that are anywhere near quick enough to do it. Oh, that's uh, that's unfortunate. Anyway, there's the two era score from the power. I just need two more era score. That's all I need. Well, I tell you what, I could just run out with a cavalry. Uh, I mean, whoever this last person is, they're at war with Arabia. I've only got two turns to find them. It's very unlikely I will, but I've got a cavalry. Y you know, I might just have to give it a go. Go on, out you pop. Make yourself useful. Just run into the desert and make people go and find somebody? I, I don't know. Oh, hello. That's a Macedonian tank. Um, that could be a problem. All right, I'm gonna have to use a bit of a wild card here. Let's just get the letter in. And now I can pray in walls. Um, I don't think these walls are going to last very long, but at least I can do 29 damage whilst it's at sea. Oh, I just randomly offered Arabia friendship and they gave it to me. <laughs> 
Okay, why do I love the fact that Arabia got the first religion? It's, it's just something so ironic about that. Oh, the letter's been lost immediately. Gilgamesh has taken them. Ah, oh, if only it had been taken by somebody I was at war with, that would have been good. Come on, let's play the gamble here, please. Let somebody that Arabia is at war with have a unit near their lands. Come on, be pillaging, be pillaging. Ah, oh, it was a gamble, never mind. The only rogue play I've got is if I could somehow get another fourth, no, five, thousand gold maybe i could buy a great person <laughs> That, that is the, the wild and crazy play I'm going with at the moment. I, I can't think of another one. Like, let me know in the comments. What would you do in this position? I'm, I'm, it's one turn and I have two era score. Everything I can think of. And, and I am the golden age expert. I, I, <laughs> I call myself that deliberately, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. This is, this is just, this is just on my mind. Who is this? Owner Egypt. Oh, don't get me excited like that. I thought, I, found, <laughs> I thought for a second I was like, oh my God, I found the person. But no. Oh, if if I could kill a core, no, that core's way too powerful. Yeah, mm, I was thinking if I could kill a core with a unit that wasn't a core, that that would be era score, right? Well, hang on, I could declare a colonial war as a joint war with Hungary. No, who's Victoria allied to? No one. Oh my God, is this it? Don't get your hopes up, Brian. No, 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 no. This is this is what you get when you just fiddle in menus. I've been looking at this, no joke, for almost an hour. <laughs> Oh my god. This is definitely the colonial war, right? Please work. Please work. She's so far away from me that surely it doesn't go- <gasps> I got the boost to nationalism! I got the cause for war! <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, I'm- I'm quite happy now. <laughs> If I could tell you how smug I currently am, it would be like on a scale of one to 10, I am one smug pug. Oh, I can relax now. I can relax now. That's amazing. Okay. Well, my, my plans change quite nicely. I'm just waiting for enlightenment to pick up scientific theory. Then we're almost at flight. I'm getting more settlers. I need to settle on a couple of continents to get me some era score. Like over here is an easy one. That counts as Western Europe, which I still haven't settled. And in theory, I could go and settle a city. Where was it? In Asia. So but there are options for me on that front. We're going to meet the last person. I would love it if I could prove that the world is round or at least kind of flattish. That counts, right? <laughs> that counts. But otherwise, it's just, we've just got to keep building. Building and preparing. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> I shouldn't be this happy, but I am. Also, I honestly have no idea how long this game is going to go on for because I honestly think that Germany is going to win by turn 200. I kid you not. Without me being able to do anything. How many spaceports have they got going? Have they run out of room? They may have run out of room. They've got at least one though. That is, is that in Berlin? That is in Berlin. They've got another one down there. Okay, they're going to have quite a few spaceports. As soon as they get onto the tier 4 project, they're going to start spamming it like crazy. We're only in the industrial era, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That's it. Okay, scientific theory and enlightenment both unlock at the same time. What are we going to do? Right now, I'm not raiding at all. Limes is giving me a little bit of diplomatic favor, which is wonderful. Retainers is keeping me happy, as is Republican Legacy. Honestly, Vissel Banking is helping me a little bit with settlers, but unless I jump in the settler card as well, it may not do me much. I could get rationalism. Like, I have a lot of plus four campuses, so that could be quite useful. So it's turn 163, 1020 AD in the sun rises in Rome on a new age, a golden industrial era, where Germany and Spain are both in golden ages themselves. This is not good. Let's just check in with this, shall we? Germany, 61 techs. Spain, 59 techs. And it jumps down hugely to 48, which is an ally of mine, and I'm on 40. I have been beelining a little bit, but not 20 techs worth of beelining. So we have a small problem. Germany is already almost on the moon. Spain has not got spaceports yet, but I believe it's only a matter of time. This game is rapidly becoming less of a restoring the Roman Empire and more how on earth do we stop Germany from winning? Tech, empire, gold, we have to just keep expanding. I think it's the only logistical and realistic option I have here. So that is exactly what we're going to do with now. My new sort of Rome replacement of Setia seems to be way more productive than Rome is itself. This is going to start spewing settlers out for me, which is wonderful. We have a lot, a lot of land that we can still call 
Gemini's. My army is now stationed in Egypt and with the addition, which hopefully will be very soon, of flight, we'll get observation balloons, we'll tie that up with nationalism to get some bombard cores and we should be able to start going for Egypt itself. Yeah, this isn't restoring the Roman Empire so much as it is just claiming Egypt, but I think the bountiful yields of the Nile, it may be one of the few things that I can actually grab here. A lot of resources along this area. So what do I need to back all of this up? It all becomes quite useful. Two extra movement speed at sea is really handy, but we've got a lot of land-based warfare at the moment, and I'm not settling enough to get the best out of this. Reform coinage would give me quite a bit of extra gold, and it would make me immune to being pillaged, which is quite fun. I also have a lot of campuses, and extra production is very, very welcome. To arms, I'm likely to prey my units in, and I'm using a lot of joint wars at the moment. We're going to go Heartbeat of Steam. I don't know if this is the correct option. I think all of them could be legitimately good options, but look at this. That's 12 production in Ravenna, another 8 in Setia, 12 in Rome. We need to keep building campuses. Campuses are an absolute priority for us, so this is this is something we need to focus on. I need to make sure I upgrade all of my units. Limes and Raid I do want to put back in pretty soon, but Professional Army Retinues, you're both going back in for a second. I need a bigger government. I need to get a lot better governments. So we'll work on that in a second, but look at this. Bombard upgrades on my trebuchets now. Curasar upgrades on my knights. This will just help me make sure that I've got a lot of very high class unit on the Egyptian border just so that I can try, try and hit them back. My great general, by the way, is now so obsolete. I'm going to bring them back to my land and take off 25% war weariness. It adds up on these huge international wars. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Tennis, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Rom88, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boyzoro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedged, Mushkin Mandeltort, Esri Dax, Debel Time, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixamatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Zersa, Zaf, thank you everyone for your support, see you all in the next video, goodbye!